Hello, welcome out to the You Matter podcast. This is Chatter with You Matter. We are a mental health organization and advocate group here on campus at California State University, Chico. And uh, so what this is going to be is just we're going to be uh, taking uh, every week, we're going to have a little podcast that's just going to be talking about mental health. It's going to be different issues. We're going to be rotating hosts every week. So we're going to get a bunch of different opinions and uh, different views on a lot of different topics. And I'm really excited for it. We're really uh, digging into this uh, this semester in spring of 2019. Uh, this is the first one for this semester we were recording and we hoped to make this a regular thing continue on with it. Uh, my name is Brandon Cross. I am a student here and I am joined by my co-host today. Um, I'm Ellie Lacayo. I'm also a student and intern for You Matter. I'm just like still thinking about how funny Chatter with You Matter is. Sorry, I, I, I got I distracted. It's, no, it's, it's a great name. We, we yeah. like, really took our time to figure out like, <laughs> we, a good We name. nailed it, though. Yeah. Like, as soon as they said that, we were just like, yes. That's the one. Like, unanimous, like, so, yes. Chatter so with cute. You Matter. Uh, we are on all social medias. We are on Facebook. Uh, we are on Instagram. We are on Twitter. We are on YouTube. These podcasts will be aired on SoundCloud, but we will also add it to our YouTube channel as well. You can find us on You Matter Chico on all those websites. So give us a like, give us a follow. Uh, if you really like what we talk about and you want some thoughts and concerns on it, tweet at us. We'll respond. We're looking at it. So yeah, or DM us because we're always asking people like what you guys want to hear us talk about. We're really curious and interested because we this is for you guys not necessarily just yeah. for our own excitement and enjoyment we yeah. want to um reach as many people as possible and help you guys out as much as possible so if you guys have any feedback after this that would be greatly appreciated as well but for our first episode we are going to talk about ptsd because cross and i both happen to have it yeah it's uh something we both kind of have experienced within our lifetimes and we're just gonna talk today a little bit about our personal experiences and kind of like what it means to live with this i know most people probably just assume ptsd is usually military yeah I, w- I was about to say that i feel like before i like got ptsd i didn't really like understand the range of people it affected like it's such a like flexible mental health issue I feel like Mm -hmm. it's very like trauma is so many different things and I don't think people necessarily know that or understand that still but yeah what do do you think about that because I also agree that the military like veterans it's probably like like the the, most like the image of PTSD especially when it comes like 4th of July fireworks going off and rightfully so too obviously yeah but uh to me like post-traumatic stress disorder um it's just like as like you know war and I'm not saying like our lives are compared to like veterans who fought like in a war or anything Mm -hmm. but like you know people can go through traumatic experiences you know uh, with many things, you know, it could be as simple as like a car crash that can be really traumatic or having, you know, like a life threatening illness can be traumatic. So it's, it's a array of different things and it really can affect you even, uh, throughout your lifetime. And it may not even happen right away. It can happen years later, which was my case and my experience in it. It just kind of like creeped up on me without me noticing. That's really interesting. Cause I, I think it was your, I think it was your video for, like, your vlog. We also have vlogs, guys. Yeah, vlogs and vlogs were on our website, so you matter, check us out. Yeah, and I, I think maybe you wrote about it? It was one of Yeah, I think I I wrote about it, my vlog. And I thought it was interesting how it did, like, come years later. Like, I, like, I wanted to understand more, like, how did that happen? Like, why do you think that happened that way? It happened, um... Well, my life had just been just a buildup of traumatic episode after traumatic episode. Mm-hmm. I uh, grew up in a household that was a very toxic environment. Uh, it was a household that was, what had a constant uh, yelling throughout it. There was just like a lot of fighting constantly. And so um, going up in that environment can be really difficult. You learn to kind of tiptoe around feelings. You learn to like 
manage emotions you learn to not lash out because you're so like afraid of what's going to happen when you're in an environment that can be so unstable Mm -hmm. and um a a reason why like the ptsd didn't come in until like years later was because when like i was growing up in that house i would purposely do as much as i can outside of my house to just kind of stay away from Mm -hmm. it i was like very involved in like my school activities and community and extracurriculars that i just did anything i can to stay out and um it wasn't until i believe it was my third year of college i think it was my junior year Mm -hmm. where um i i had this episode where i was in my apartment with my roommate uh i had just gone off of work and we're just talking before like we're about to like go to bed and then um i had just randomly just passed out i just hit the ground for no explained reason and it just kind of happened before any of us even realized what was happening and then like I immediately had to like go to the emergency room because I could have had a concussion and all that stuff and I know that event doesn't seem like such a big deal but it was kind of like the final straw that broke the camel's back Mm -hmm. I, I guess would be the best way to put it because like once that episode happened it just really rattled me it just like completely freaked me out that's so scary that's so like random too yeah and there there are parts of like that couple hours that i still do not remember to this day because Mm -hmm. of that entire thing and it, it just it just really like shook me and freaked me out and then it was after that where like that event happened that like all of a sudden i was like having really bad anxiety i was having really bad panic attacks and it kind of just like Mm -hmm. all finally piled in like all those years of just running away from like the issues Mm -hmm. and not really like approaching Mm -hmm. them and kind of just like dealing with it living in the environment that i did and then this was just finally the one that just did me over and it has it, it really like affected me for years that's crazy like i can't even imagine like Cause you know, home is supposed to be your safe space, and when it's just like jam packed with trauma, and like trauma that you ran away from too, I can see why the like. I feel like, you just boiled over, kind of. Yeah. You know? It just it just built up. Yeah, it really just built up. And, and I then... I never like thought twice about it until like that event happened, and which is when I finally was like, okay, I need to like start going to therapy. Yeah, I like to I need start... to like I need to like figure this yeah, out. Yeah, I need you know? to like approach this stuff, yeah. and that's kind of like what happened. And it has taken me years to like get back to where I want to be. And mm-hmm. to how I feel. About Wait, did myself. you say your junior year of high school or college? College. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, that's what it happened. Because, like I said, in high school, I was like constantly, mm-hmm. purposely busy. So I didn't really have time to like. Wait, where are you from, Cross? San Jose. Like San Jose, San Jose. Sunnyvale, San Jose. Come on, where are you actually? Sunnyvale. From? Okay, Sunnyvale. Yeah, Bay Area part. It's just outside of San Jose for anyone. But so that was like my event. That was like my story. And like it is, it is taking me years to get back to where I wanted to. But I think like I have made like massive improvements and steps. Yeah. And Are you still going to therapy? Yeah, whenever I need to. Uh, oh. I I don't want to like take up a spot for someone else that may need it. But I do not hesitate when I feel like I need it. As mm-hmm. you shouldn't. Yeah. Did you, like, ever take medication for it? I, I was on briefly. I was open to it. Um, my doctors had put me on a certain med. Uh, I didn't quite like how it felt. Mm-hmm. Um, so he switched me to different types of meds, and it just really was not working. Interesting. At all. So I kind of just decided, I was like, look, it's not really working with these. I just, so I forced myself to be like, hey, you need to figure out a different way interesting so what did you do i it it just it took therapy it took um a a lot of like self thoughts you know it it took a lot of like rewiring how i think about Mm. like certain things you know to try and see things in a better manner instead of uh you know instantly going to like the worst situation possible Mm -hmm. right away and it it, it took uh all that stuff and just kind of a lot of patience with myself and it just it's, oh God, it's being patient with yourself is so it's, hard. it's the hardest like thing. i get so mad at myself i'm like why why am i letting like the mental illness just like win and i i get so mad but it's it's sometimes like it's really out of your control like you really have to just like be patient with yourself and like write it day by day but i've been a lot better too mm-hmm. my yeah, my story, story is like way 
different than crosses. It kind of happened like immediately after my trauma. But over the summer, like this summer, I got sexually assaulted and it was the scariest thing that's ever happened in my life. Um, and it's like, I don't remember parts of it either, but the parts that I do remember are were so like intense enough that it like rewired it like PTSD rewires your brain. Yeah, it completely yeah. just like alters your reality. It, yeah, it alters. It, that's what it felt like. Like that's what I can remember that I like was just not feeling like myself. Like I felt like it was a foggy dream mm-hmm. for like a couple months. It was yeah. really where, where you weird. feel like you're awake, but it feels like nothing is yeah, really real. Yeah, it yeah, it yeah. didn't feel like anything was real. I was like, "There's no way that happened. Like, there's no way something that crazy happened." Like, it was so intense. Like, that's what I can remember. But that what was that? That was like six six months ago. Maybe. So it was very recent. Yeah, it was. So this really is like recent. a recent thing that you. This was really recent. Did, so how how is it to you where it's a more recent like issue with PTSD and anxiety and everything that comes with it, as compared to me where it's like I've been dealing with it for years and I'm finally getting to a better spot. Yeah, so how's it, it feel isn't, being on isn't the that new? crazy too that like just one event can give you PTSD mm-hmm. and also like multiple events obviously can give you PTSD and some people go through trauma and don't even get PTSD which is crazy too well not crazy but Uh, it's very interesting how it affects all of us differently but I'm really surprised at how you're able to like cope with it without medication because I feel like I would be really having a hard time without medication. Mm-hmm. And, I'm, and I'm still taking meds. Yeah, right and, now, and there's yeah. absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah, no. Like meds are very. I'm just very fascinated by the difference. <laughs> and it, it was like rough. I mean, like it, it took you know years of mental breakdowns constantly happening and self doubt, and it just like it takes time. It it might have been faster if I had just like fully committed to oh, the yeah. pills but it just it wasn't working for me and mm-hmm. that's not to say it doesn't work for someone else it, mm-hmm. i hope it's been yeah going yeah through. it's been really making me feel better i would also rec- like to anyone else out there that has ptsd i would recommend going on medication because i definitely have felt the difference like i feel i was feeling really rough and anxious last semester mm-hmm. um but this semester i've been feeling pretty good like still kind of like depressed here and there or sad a little bit but the anxiety has really like gone over like I was kind of scared to be outside at night or like just scared to be without my roommates but slowly but surely been getting more independent and really proud of myself so that's just to show that the like I'm gonna like beat it you yeah, know, yeah, we're all gonna be yeah. we'll all be okay. Yeah. The the best way to like describe it is like it's a marathon, it's not a sprint length. There are it really is a are, marathon. Yeah, there are parts that are gonna be rough and then there are parts that are gonna be easier, but it might even be a triathlon because <laughs> I have so. I, I have depression and anxiety and PTSD and I would say that PTSD is the worst out of the three yeah. by far. Yeah. It was just, like, I think because it's just a combination of all three and just, like, being scared and paranoid all the time. Mm -hmm. That's, like, so horrible to just be scared to be outside or just be in class. Because it just gave me, like, some sort of fear, like, revolving men for a little bit, Mm -hmm. you know, last semester. I can definitely, like, remember that. I was having a really hard time. Because one of my classes, it was once a week, but it was two hours long and it was a huge lecture class Mm -hmm. and there's tons of people I don't know anyone and I was just afraid like I've just been afraid of men recently but I can feel it like lessening like slowly lessening like getting better like these people are not threats, you know, like, they're yeah, coming. Yeah, it, it's and just I think, the experience and, you went yeah, through, it and just I think, completely alters your reality. Yeah, and I think that's what PTSD does. It makes everything a threat. Mm-hmm. It makes everything a threat. Yeah, and it becomes a threat before you even realize that, like, yes. hey, this is supposed to be a threat. Yeah. It kind of, like, takes a step, like, above in your reaction level and kind of just 
you honestly the car, go on like some sort of like animalistic mode. Like yeah. you're always kind of like on your body's edge. looking for danger. Yeah, you're just without you even like, realizing it. Like know? analyzing your surroundings. On yeah, it's constant crazy. Base. Like the like, yeah, I didn't really know how animal like we were also until i got it Mm because my therapist just would like explain that like it's fight or flight or freeze yeah or you can feign death she said like you can pretend to be dead that's how we like survive as animals and that's what happens when you go through a traumatic experience your brain rewrite we wires itself to like understand these like strategies in order to escape and survive yeah. that's like really and it's not something intense. your brain's gonna understand right away yeah it's gonna like you know slow you down it's gonna affect like your social life it's gonna affect your work life school life oh yeah daily for sure. life day to day and like it can be infuriating because like w- before like the these episodes to us that happened it's like you know we we're probably like you know going out hanging out with friends constantly like we were happy to jump out of bed every morning. We were, like, eating right and, like, you know, going to sleep at reasonable times. Oh, but yeah. But then, like, all that kind of just, like, stops because, like, you just went through this thing that, like, you just need to figure out, like, how to handle. Oh, yeah. I definitely... I cross. I don't even know how I managed to go to work after the assault. Like, mm-hmm. I was still going to work. I maybe missed, like one shift maybe the yeah one shift and then afterwards i came back and was just like pretending to be normal but in my head i was like holy like you you felt like you had to like put that holy crap yeah Yeah. like something really crazy just happened and no one knows and yeah you really do have to like just really force yourself to be okay even though something crazy like that just happened but some people they can't be okay it really does Mm -hmm. affect them in a way that they can't function and that's really scary that's really frustrating yeah like those automatic responses will just come into play and like they don't have control yeah over it it just kind of takes over and it can be scary sometimes yeah i was really mad too because it like really messed up my summer i was having a really fun summer i was going out and then afterwards, I was like, nope, I am i can't go outside. Like, I'm not going out. I'm not drinking. Like, I'm not doing anything. Mm. That's not... Like, I felt like after the assault and having PTSD, it made me just afraid to live my regular life. Mm-hmm. But that's really not a way to live, you know? Yeah. But I'm glad it's definitely been getting better and... Slowly but surely, I feel like it, I'll be okay eventually. Yeah, yeah, it'll be okay. For anyone else who's listening to this and is a sexual assault survivor, like it's it's gonna get better. Um, I would recommend if you haven't already to go to therapy for it. I don't think I would have understood or understand because I still am learning about it. What PTSD is without the help of my therapist and how it affected me and I don't know if you had EMDR at therapy but I had EMDR at therapy no. you that's like the mm-hmm. that's like the main form of therapy that they give or yeah that they give um people who have PTSD it's I can't really explain what it is to the best of my knowledge Mm -hmm. but basically they stimulate both sides of your like brain using different sensations so either touch or sight yeah touch or sight or hearing yeah so i did the hearing one so you put like a microphone on and then you hear one noise on one side like a beep Mm -hmm. and then a beep on the other side and while this is going on she your therapist asks you to like recall the traumatic event and you describe it to her like you basically go into that moment and like i was super scared like it feels really scary she's like asking you to describe like what it was like how you felt in that moment um and then you basically talk about like 
like you basically rewrite the memory in a way like you lay down the memory differently so for instance for me i told her about my assault and how i felt like i was in a dream like it didn't really feel real and it was super scary and i felt helpless and you recall all these emotions and you go back to the helplessness and then you rewrite the memory to be like this wasn't my fault like i didn't do anything to like get into this situation Mm -hmm. like i'm okay like i i made it through like it was really scary but i'm here now and for some reason stimulating both sides of your like head makes you be able to lay down the memory differently i don't know it's really weird it sounds really strange and bizarre but was it like, and low-key like hypnosis but it works cross <laughs> i swear dude it hella works like it's crazy after that one session i felt hella better mm-hmm. it do, was do you really think weird. it was also like having that kind of help you to talk about the event kind of just to like get it on the open was what really kind of like helped i think like being able to feel the emotions that you felt and like in a controlled environment and knowing that you're okay like it happened like you felt it Mm -hmm. and you're okay like nothing happened you didn't die that i think that helps Mm -hmm. for whatever reason like you're you're like telling yourself that you're you survived yeah it's about rewiring the way you think about situations yeah yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. EMDR is insane. I don't know what, like, I wish I understood the science behind it more. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's what it, I don't really know what the, I think it's eye movement, desensitization. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the mm-hmm. last letter. But it's definitely something, something like that. to look into yeah. at some point, maybe. Really interesting. If you, maybe you might feel like that could benefit you. I think most therapists who treat people with PTSD, like, uh-huh. should know EMDR. Most likely, probably. Yeah. But, like, it's going to be different for everyone. Yeah. Like, different approaches are going to work for different people. Yeah, that as well. You can even just... Some people just talk about it, and yeah. that helps. Yeah, I think not, Yeah, I think open. not talking yeah. about it would probably it be the, the worst thing yeah. to it's do. It's part I, of the reason why we're doing, like, this podcast. Yeah. To, like, try and just, like, destigmatize the world of mental health and kind of just normalize the conversation. Therapy is so great. It's the like, best. I would not <laughs> be here probably without my therapist. Agreed. Like, Agreed. She was... They're there for you during your roughest moment. Mm, like, they see you at your worst. Yeah, definitely. And they know what to do to help. Yeah. Like, they know exactly how to... Well, also, not every therapist is going to be compatible with you. Yeah, that could they, be, like, the most frustrating part. But they are professional. Like, they, yeah. they want to help you, is yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I think that can be one of the most frustrating parts about someone who wants to go to therapy but isn't quite sure if it's going to, like, work out or if it's for them is, like that juggling around from therapist to therapist at first but yeah once and you I land feel, yeah. with the one that you really can like click with and can really help it just helps monumentally mm-hmm. i feel like a lot of people are also just scared to tell their problems to a stranger but i think a lot of people forget that that's yeah. literally their job yeah like, but they... some people are completely opposite where they find it comforting knowing yeah. that they're talking about this event to a stranger. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've met more people, though, that are uncomfortable talking to yeah. a stranger. Yeah. Which I think it's interesting because I'm one of those other people. Like, I, I'm i more comfortable talking to a stranger so, because they don't know me at all. Like, they they can't be biased because they don't know yeah, me. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, so, with PTSD, um, I just want to talk about kind of, like, what are like some of like the most difficult things living with PTSD? I think just the anxiety or when I want to do things but it wants to like act up. Like for example, like go out or drink sometimes because drinking was a part of my trauma. Sometimes I just get really scared or mm-hmm. I get really anxious, but I don't want to miss out on all these experiences because I am a college student. I'm just afraid about missing out, you know? I'm afraid of being afraid yeah, <laughs> of things. Yeah, the, the whole FOMO yeah, experience. Yeah, I'm yeah. afraid of being afraid of things. I don't... 
I don't want to stop living my life just because of this one event. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when it is difficult, I get really frustrated with myself. Yeah. And I'm just like, why can't you just be normal? Like, why can't you just suck it up and be okay and not let all these things trigger you, Ellie? Like, <laughs> you're fine. Nothing is going to happen. But it's like, sometimes it's beyond my control. Yeah. Or from what I've noticed in the past yeah. six, seven months. I, I think, like, the best way to try and explain, like, PTSD or anxiety and everything that comes with it is that... The, the, the best way is that instead of you controlling your thoughts, it's your thoughts controlling you. Mm-hmm. I feel like is probably like the best way to put it in terms for maybe someone who doesn't quite understand exactly what is going on. Mm-hmm. And I think like having that uh, mentality of like thoughts controlling you can like be really affecting in your day to day life. I think the, one of the most frustrating things is the fact that when you are suffering with it and then you have to go out and you have to do the normal things in your life you have to go to work you have to go to class yeah, yeah you, you have can't to like, and like i you, can't not miss work I, yeah I can't and, and then so you just class. have to go and you have yeah. to be there at work with your coworkers, and, and no one like, knows no what's one going on. knows how bad my anxiety yeah. is like it's crazy i'm just in class like counting down the minutes to like the class run is over, so to get, get out. out of yeah. there it's awful like those are the worst moments. Yeah. Like, I wish I could just be a calm, a calm person 24 hours of, like, every day yeah. of my life. But sadly, that isn't possible. Like, it's always going to be something that I'm going to have to work on. Like, mm. it's going to be con- a constant, like, exercise. Like, dealing with mental illnesses is doing mental exercises mm-hmm. all the time yeah you're ha- you have to talk- to get it stronger you have to constantly work you have yeah you have to constantly work on like how you think mm-hmm. how you are talking to yourself yeah and and so what these thoughts are doing to you like you have to notice like how thoughts affect you and, and your behaviors yeah yeah so i i think that's like a g- very good point it's like you have to if you do start thinking a certain way um it, you know, it, the first step is just acknowledging the fact that you thought that way at first. And, like, if you can take the step back to kind of acknowledge, like, the way you're thinking and why you were thinking that thought, uh, then you can really start, on, like, on the path to kind of, like, rewiring and kind of so, like, if you can just take that moment to look at it, it goes a long way. Yeah, but that's, like, really not... Yeah, it's definitely so easier said easy. than done. Yeah, like, so if, not... if you had asked me and talked to me about this a couple of years ago, yeah, I, I would have feel been like, no, a completely I would have, different person. Yeah, I would have no idea what you're even talking about. Like, I feel like people listening to us right now probably aren't really going to under cuz understand what we're saying cuz it's a really complicated thing yeah. to Yeah, we are we are trying our best to be here able to grasp to, compli- yeah. to simplify this as much as we can. Yeah, yeah, but that's definitely out of all my mental illnesses that I have, PTSD is the the most intense, I would say. Yeah, it, it's and like the this... one that has been the most the one I've had to post the most mental exercises yeah. into. The, the most work. The most work into. Yeah. Because it's kind of like the shadow that kind of just like follows you over your head everywhere you go. Yeah. Right? It's, it's the, it's the rough one. It's yeah. definitely the rough one. It like sneaks up on you too. Like you don't really know what like is going to remind you of the event. Mm-hmm. Like, you could just it could be literally, watching Netflix. You, you don't even have to know that your body is, like, reacting to something. It's crazy. Yeah, it'll yeah. just take over. Yeah, it, it could be anything, like a smell, mm-hmm. like something that looks like something. Like, it doesn't even have to be slightly resembled. Sometimes it's just, like, an angle. Yeah. And I'm just, like, can... full-on panic. It's really i'm trying so hard not to say crazy but it's kind of hard not to say crazy but it is crazy <laughs> in in my experience for myself not like saying that well it's not an easy people. thing to get through really i think no matter what we are i think you and i have two very different experiences with ptsd as it's going to be two different experiences for any two people yeah that there are it's it's rough yeah And like I said in the beginning, it's really interesting how trauma 
can be so many different things. It doesn't even have to be something as big as a sexual assault. Mm-hmm. It could literally be like you broke your arm that one time and you got so you, really sick yeah. afterwards and you weren't going outside and that made you feel yeah like, or like a car crash yeah. and now you never want to be in a car again. yeah or like what just happened in paradise like those people are probably really traumatized you know yeah with the be a fire yeah. and everything yeah we hope you enjoyed listening to us this is uh the first one of the semester that we're doing like i said we uh are planning to do this once every week that's the goal uh and i will do my best to make sure that that happens uh but you know life happens sometimes and um we're gonna continue with it but um like i said we are on social medias we are on facebook twitter instagram youtube uh you matter chico and that is you with the letter u uh, not Y O U and it's um, You Matter Chico State. You Matter Chico State, yeah. yes. And um, so give us a follow, uh, tweet at us, comment on it on our YouTube. Like I said, this podcast will mainly air on SoundCloud, same title as everything else, You Matter Chico. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we will be adding it to YouTube, and um, we hope you enjoyed this, Ellie. Thank yeah. you for joining today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'll probably be back. For more, most honestly. likely, yeah. most likely, yeah. Th- yeah. There'll be a, a rotate of like co hosts throughout the semester, so we're gonna get a bunch of different uh perspectives and thoughts. It's not uh, we're looking to not just keep this within our uh intern organization mm-hmm. with you yes. matter, we are looking to expand this as much as we can. So, um, thank you for listening in, yeah. and I hope you, you guys all enjoyed it.